In this video, I'm going to break down the matchup between Yuri and Glover, give some potential scenarios that may happen, and finally, give my prediction on the fight. Let's do it. What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to the channel. Since the retirement of Daniel Cormier and John Jones' move up to heavyweight, light heavyweight has become quite the exciting division, and some new faces are popping up that are quickly becoming fan favorites. Perhaps most exciting of all is UFC newcomer Yuri Prohachka. The Czech finisher has exploded onto the scene with knockout victories of both Volkan Ozdemir and and Dominic Reyes, and in just his third outing has found himself in a title fight with none other than 42-year-old, tough, grizzled champion Glover Teixeira. And if you can believe it, Prohachka is actually the slight favorite in this matchup. But can the champion, the underdog, Glover Teixeira, upset Yuri and prove once again that age is just a number? All right, so many see this fight as a classic striker versus grappler matchup. And while I don't necessarily disagree with that sentiment, I do think there are some variables and nuances to discuss here. When it comes to striking, there's no secret that Yuri is one of the best in the game. He has 28 victories in his pro MMA career, and 25 of those victories have come by way of knockout. That said, it's safe to say that Glover cannot absorb significant strikes round over round and expect to get a victory here. However, Teixeira is famous for having that granite chin. And if you need to be reminded of that, just go back and watch Glover Teixeira versus Tiago Santos and look at the damage that he absorbed and still got the submission victory at the end of the fight. Couple that with the fact that Glover also hits like a freight train and most of his wins, like Yuri's, come by way of knockout. On top of that, Prohachka's style, while uber effective and super exciting, does lend him to get hit quite often because he's so open and fluid. I could see a scenario where Glover actually takes two to give one, so to speak, and does cause some potential problems on the feet for Yuri. Also, one of the new training partners Glover has in his camp is none other than Brazilian kickboxing sensation Alex Pereira, who has a knockout victory over current middleweight champion Israel Adesanya. I think it's safe to assume that Alex is probably giving Glover some looks in sparring that he's likely to see against Yuri in the octagon. Even considering all that, I do see the clear advantage when it comes to striking going to Yuri Prohachka. He's young, technical, fast, powerful and creative. And while Glover can hang with most people on the feet and does have very sound fundamental boxing, I do think that his best chance to win this fight is by taking it to the ground. So let's discuss what happens if this fight should go to the canvas. As you would expect from a high level Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, Glover Teixeira can pretty much submit you and is a threat in any position on the ground. It didn't take him long to make Jan Blahovich tap and ultimately win the belt once he got the fight to the ground in their meeting last year. Glover executes beautiful textbook single and double leg take downs with a very high success rate. And Yuri will have to be super careful not to let Glover get a hold of either one of his legs or get a tight body lock on him. I think we're going to see Glover look for takedowns early and often in this fight. And honestly, I think this is going to be where Prohachka shows us whether or not he's truly UFC champion material. The good news for Yuri, though, is that he's really strong and super wiry. So I do expect him to be harder to keep on the ground than most might think. And if he ends up on the bottom in a guard type of situation, look for him to throw elbows, punches, and be very active from the bottom. He will do this in an effort to create scrambles and get back to his feet. I think a lot will be determined by how much energy Yuri actually has to expend to get back to his feet should he be taken down, and that will dictate really where this fight goes. Also, Glover's shots are not without risk. Yuri throws a lot of unorthodox shots up the middle, so if Glover telegraphs a shot at all, look for some uppercuts and knees up the middle from Yuri. Clearly, the advantage on the ground for me does still go to Glover. However, I do think Yuri can create some problems from the bottom with those elbows and sneaky shots, and we'll see how much energy he has to expend to get back to his feet should he end up on his back. Okay. Time for my predictions now. While I do see multiple scenarios where Glover could pull off the upset here, my money is on Yuri Prohachka becoming the undisputed light heavyweight champion. And I think the two difference makers here will be one, the speed of Yuri and the sheer volume of strikes that he throws. Two, the creative and very unpredictable shot selection. And three, last but not least, the devastating power that he possesses. After all, he doesn't have over a 90% knockout ratio for no reason. Also, I think unless Glover can get Yuri down very early before they're both sweaty and tired, he'll have a very hard time keeping him there and doing much damage on the ground. I think Prohatska's ability to escape and create scrambles will ultimately keep him safe in an otherwise very dangerous situation. And while Glover is known for that granite chin of his, he has been in some wars. And one thing we know about our chins, they deteriorate over time, especially after 40. My final prediction is that Yuri Prohatska is going to win this fight by technical knockout in the third round. Let me know if you agree or disagree and drop your predictions in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, guys, my brother Nick and I talk all things combat sports on this channel. We appreciate a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.